today, findings from the AACR annual meeting, including phase three results for nivolumab in head and neck cancer, long-term data for nivolumab in melanoma, findings for TDM1 plus pertuzumab from the iSPY2 study, and early data for pembrolizumab and Merkel cell carcinoma. Welcome to Enclave News Network, I'm Gina Columbus. Treatment with single-agent nivolumab reduced the risk of death by 30%, compared with therapy of investigator's choice for patients with recurrent or metastatic head and neck cancer in the Phase 3 Checkmate 141 study. The median survival with nivolumab was 7.5 months compared with 5.1 months in the control arm. At one year, 36% of patients remained alive in the nivolumab arm compared with 17% in the control group, which included chemotherapy or cetuximab. The response rate was 11.7% with nivolumab versus 7.4% with investigator's choice of therapy. Median PFS was not improved with nivolumab versus the control arm. In subgroup analyses, HPV positive patients and those with PDL1 expressing tumors appear to have improved long term outcomes with nivolumab. In the HPV positive group, Median survival was improved by 43% with nivolumab versus investigator's choice. An improvement of 44% was seen with nivolumab over the control arm in the PDL1 positive subgroup. When Dr. Maura Gilliason from The Ohio State University presented the findings, she said, This study is the first randomized clinical trial to clearly demonstrate improved overall survival for patients with platinum refractory recurrent or metastatic head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. We hope that the results will establish nivolumab as a new standard of care option for this patient population and thereby fulfill a huge unmet need. Long-term data from a phase one trial have shown a five-year survival rate with single-agent nivolumab of 34%. This is nearly double the expectations based on the SEER database, which lists a five-year survival of 16.6%. In the phase one study, which enrolled 107 patients, the survival curves plateaued at 48 months and remained consistent across doses. Median survival was 20.3 months with the FDA recommended dose of 3 mg per kilogram. At 30 months, 25.7% of patients remained progression-free. Lead investigator of the study, Dr. Stephen Hody from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute said, These data provide a foundation for establishing anti-PD-1 therapy as another standard for melanoma patients, and hopefully this would translate to other cancer types as well. In a phase one study, treatment with pembrolizumab demonstrated an objective response rate of 56% for patients with advanced Merkel cell carcinoma. The response duration range was from 2.2 months to at least 9.7 months. Four patients experienced a complete response. At six months, 67% of patients remained progression free. The efficacy of PD-1 inhibition may be related to Merkel cell polyomavirus infection. In the study, 65% of patients had tumors that tested positive for the virus. In this group of individuals, the response rate to pembrolizumab was 62% versus 44% in the negative arm. Lead investigator Dr. Paul Neum from the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center said, Currently, there are no FDA-approved drugs for the treatment of MCC. We are expanding this trial to recruit additional patients, and we hope that these data will contribute to meaningful new therapeutic options becoming available for these patients. A cohort from the iSPY2 trial has shown that neoadjuvant treatment with trastuzumab emtanzine, also known as TDM1 plus pertuzumab, was superior to trastuzumab plus paclitaxel for women with HER2-positive breast cancer. Pathological complete response, or PCR, Rates across HER2 positive groups were nearly doubled with TDM1 and pertuzumab versus the control arm. In those with HER2 positive hormone receptor negative breast cancer, a third of patients responded to trastuzumab plus chemotherapy, compared with two thirds for TDM1 and pertuzumab. In those with HER2 positive breast cancer, regardless of hormonal receptor status, there was a 99.5% certainty of superiority with the TDM1 combination. Based on statistical findings from the iSPY2 study, there is a 90 to 94% likelihood that TDM1 plus pertuzumab will be superior to trastuzumab plus paclitaxel in a 300-patient phase 3 study. 
Lead investigator Dr. Angela D. Michelle from the University of Pennsylvania said, these data provide a possible new treatment option for patients with newly diagnosed breast cancer. This also shows that by replacing older, non-targeted therapies with more effective, less toxic new therapies, we have the potential to both improve outcomes and decrease side effects. For more information from the AACR annual meeting, make sure to visit Enclave.com. Thank you for watching Enclave News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.